Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. Adrenocorticotropic hormone. Have you heard of it? Maybe, maybe not. It's very important regardless. Let's break it down and talk about what it actually does. So firstly, it's a big name. Don't stress out about it. Adrenocorticotropic hormone. It's all in the name in regards to where it goes and what it does. First thing is adreno. That means the adrenal glands. These are the little caps that sit on top of our kidneys. I've got Frank here. I've taken out his abdominal organs. And what you can see at the back of his abdomen are his two kidneys and the two caps that sit on top called the adrenal glands. So this hormone stimulates the adrenal glands. More specifically, cortico tells you it stimulates the cortex of the adrenal glands. This is the outermost portion of the adrenal glands and tropic when you hear the term tropic when we talk about hormones it means that it is a hormone that goes to a gland and tells that gland to release another hormone or bunch of hormones so tropic is a hormone that goes to a gland that tells that gland to release more hormones so adrenocorticotropic hormone is a is a hormone that travels to the adrenal glands specifically the cortex to tell it to release a bunch of hormones now where is it released from specifically it's released from a part of the brain called the pituitary gland. I'm gonna take Frank's brain out here and we're gonna have a quick look. You can see the brain stem, the cerebellum, and as we go deep into the brain, you see a part here at the base of the brain called the hypothalamus. This is the master regulator of the endocrine system, which is the hormone system. And this projection here called the pituitary gland. Now I've drawn it up on the board from the opposite view. Brain stem here, cerebellum, hypothalamus is this red mark here, and here's the pituitary gland. You can break the pituitary gland up into the front and back, anterior, posterior. Today we're talking about the anterior pituitary because this is where ACTH is released from. So what happens is, when you hear certain sounds, sounds that induce anxiety, sounds that induce fear or rage, pain or stress, all of these will send afferent signals up to your brain via your nervous system, and they stimulate the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus receives these signals and goes, okay, we need to activate something that can help me manage in these times of stress. So the hypothalamus will release a hormone that travels via a small little blood system that goes from the hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary. It releases a hormone, goes to this bloodstream, stimulates the anterior pituitary to release its hormone, which is ACTH, adrenocorticotropic hormone. Because it's a hormone, it's now jumping into the bloodstream, traveling all around the body, and when it gets to the adrenal glands, again, specifically the cortex, it releases a bunch of hormones. What are these hormones? First, there's the mineralla corticoids. Minerella tells you it's playing around with minerals. Cortico is telling you, again, it's at the cortex. And oid is telling you it's a steroid. So if it's ending in oid, it is a steroid. What does a steroid do? Well, it basically travels to the cells, jumps inside the nucleus, goes to your DNA, and alters the way that your genes are transcribed. That's how steroids work. All right. Mineralocorticoid, the one you need to know is aldosterone. What does aldosterone do? Well, aldosterone travels to your kidneys, specifically the nephron, remember the video I did on the nephron, tells it to reabsorb sodium back into the bloodstream. Aldosterone tells sodium to jump back into the bloodstream. Why? Because wherever sodium goes, water follows. If you pull sodium into your bloodstream, water goes into your bloodstream, your blood volume goes up, that means your blood pressure goes up. When your blood pressure goes up, we know this is one response to stress. Why do we want this? If our blood pressure goes up, it means more blood can be pushed to certain parts of the body, and that means we can get more blood to our muscles to fight or flight. What about the glucocorticoids? Gluco refers to glucose, okay. These, which is cortisol and corticosterone, these are the two steroid hormones that are released from the adrenal cortex that allow for us to undergo carbohydrate metabolism. That means we can use glucose for energy. Any stored glucose as glycogen, we can now turn into energy so we can fight or flight. Again, this stress response. But they also play a role in suppressing the immune system and suppressing inflammation. I will do a video just on these two hormones and on cortisone, which is often the exogenous, that means from the outside to our body, uh, drug that we use as a proxy for these drugs. Then we've got the androgens. Androgens are the hormones that play a role in masculinization. So these include di, hydro, epi, andosterone. So this is DHEA. Again, what this does is it plays a role in male sexual characteristics. But what we want to refer to here more specifically is the fact that we've got mineral glucocorticoids, glucocorticoids, and the ones that are most strongly stimulated by ACTH are the glucocorticoids. All right, when their levels go up, they actually travel back 
to the pituitary gland and they inhibit ACTH release. This is how we go through these levels and negatively regulating it. So that's ACTH.